Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sanal Mahmedovic. I will be the guest on the Dean Show telling you about my life and don't get any, go anywhere, we'll be right back. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm Eddie, your host of the Dean Show and this week, oh man. You are going to be amazed. This is an incredible human, an incredible human being that you're going to meet. An amazing person, Sanel. Got a chance to spend a little bit of time with him. We got his interview, and this will help all of us who complain. We're just complaining day and night. When you look at this brother's situation and how buoyant and happy he is, how he's passing his test, and he doesn't have many of the things that we have. And you're going to get to see that firsthand when we come back here in the Dean Show. Now, just before we cut out and go to this week's show, just a friendly reminder for myself, first and foremost, and for all the millions of viewers that are out there. It's Ramadan. We need to get the most out of it. Alhamdulillah, all praises to the creator of the heavens and earth that's given us life that we can experience another Ramadan. So this is training ground. We want to develop ourselves, that's right, to be the best human beings that we can be. So we got to watch out for all the evil things that will not be conducive to the development of our spiritual side, our taqwa, our God consciousness, developing ourselves so we can get and have a closer relationship with our Creator. This is what the plan is. This is what we need to be doing. So then we'll have a boost, we'll get pumped up, and we'll be ready for the rest of the year. And if Allah gives us life, we'll be back at it again because the Iman goes up and down. And this is the time, through all the extra acts of worship, to really refrain from every evil vice that's out there. It's tough, it's not easy. But you know what? As you go higher up, you want to get that PhD, you want to get that doctorate, there's less people in class, isn't there? So the higher you are in developing yourself, you know what? It's going to take a little more patience. It's going to take a little more commitment. But Allah knows you can do it. So He wants to bring out the best in you. So you can have the higher levels of Jannah. That's right. We want to get to paradise. This life is short. It's going to end at any time. So the reminder is, especially during this month, we have to be cautious about all the bad things that are out there. And you know what? Some of those things now are the gossiping, the backbiting, getting in other people's business, saying things about people, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, to say something that your brother wouldn't like when he's not in front of you, when his presence is not there, that's backbiting. But then to say something about her or him, that's not true, that's slander. So we have to be careful. Have our tongue moist, moist with the remembrance of Allah, the Creator, not with things that are of no benefit, that the angel on the right, he's not writing down the good, he's writing down the bad. And another thing we have to be aware of. So if we train ourselves now, it's going to be easier for the rest of the year when we get out of Ramadan. This is the training ground. You know it, I'm just reminding you, and myself. And another thing, we have to stay away from, there's a lot of good that can be accomplished with a lot of the social media tools that are out there. So... I don't want to just speak generally, I want to give you something tangible to work on. You know, we get taken away with a lot of the technological advances, and Facebook is one of them. Millions of people got it, and we're on there chatting away. We're chatting away, but a lot of times we're chatting away with useless chit-chatter, jibber-jatter. And you know what? Is the angel on the right? Is he writing the good deeds? What are we doing? Are we refraining from things that we should be refraining from? Are we getting into, you know, it starts off with the innocent, hello, how are you? You expose yourself. And now what happens? Now you end up talking to the opposite gender without your parents' permission, the women especially, strike a pose. And now everybody's like, hey, you're looking so fine there, honey. And what happens? Now your head gets a little big. And now what happens? You're full of yourself. And what happens? Now it's harder to disattach from this. You're liking the attention. But is this pleasing to Allah? Is the attention of all the boys out there more pleasing than the attention of Allah? Same thing for the young men out there. You're posting all the pictures, maybe of women that shouldn't be on your page. You're exposing yourself and your body, your aura. You're exposing your body. And you're putting things out there that, wow, we can't believe as Muslims that these things are up on your accounts, man. 
You need to chill, especially during this month. We need to refrain. We are Muslims. Sisters, brothers, please, now is the time. Get away from the useless jibber-jatter, chit-chatter. Don't expose yourselves out there. The wolves are on the hunt, and they're looking to get those good sisters. They're out there. And same thing for the brothers. Don't get caught off guard. You see something, it's like an arrow through the heart. And now your iman, what? Does it increase? No, it decreases. And you're looking, for, looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. You should be lowering the gaze. You should be staying away from these things. But you know what? We get tricked. We get trapped because shaitan's the pimp. He's the biggest pimp and he's looking to pimp us. So please, now is the time to refrain from all the evil things. Sisters, if this month you got a chance to observe the hijab, don't take it off at the end of Ramadan. Don't turn the corner and put the tight jeans on when nobody's looking. Don't do that. These are tangible things. These are real things in the real world that we're facing, the issues. Brother, you're in the masjid. You ain't swearing or cursing, but you turn the corner and you're speaking French. And I'm not talking French fries or French food. I'm talking about the foul language that's coming out of your mouth. So these are just a few things that we need to be aware of. We're Muslims. We're ones who have consciously submitted to who? To a man, to a monkey? No, We've submitted to the one who's created this whole universe and everything in it. And he's got a great reward for us. He's got a great prize. It's the ultimate prize of Jannah. Get your eyes hypnotized to that prize. Stay away from many of the R-rated movies. And it's Ramadan. You're refraining from what? From food and drink. But now... You're watching the big screen. You're flickering through the channels and promiscuity and women naked and men naked and they kissing an American idol. And again, you're losing your fast. You don't even know it. You're starving yourself. But you know what? It's all going out the window because again, we're not watching what we should not be watching. And that's the reminder that I want to remind myself and my brothers and sisters out of the love that we love you here at the Dean Show. So please, these are some practical things that are going on. So if you find yourself, your iman is going down, check yourself. You got some CD or some music in the car, bobbing your head to fist cents or Lady Gaga, Goo Goo, and all that other nonsense. These are, these are the things that do not help us or bring us closer to the creator of the heavens and the earth. They don't remind us about paradise, the day of judgment, the hereafter, doing good. They take us away from doing good and we end up falling into trickery. We end up falling into things that decrease our iman. So please, this is the advice that I give you, especially during this month, that we strengthen up ourselves. We walk straight and we're proud to be Muslims, once again who have submitted to the will of the one God, acquiring peace by doing all the good things that he's told us to do. The same way Jesus, Moses, all the righteous predecessors, all of them did this in the last and final messenger sent to mankind. His sunnah is the way that we need to follow and we need to this month really get to know it. Tune into the Dean Show. Tune into Peace T. There's so many other media outlets. Stay away from the things that will only hinder you from growing in the Dean, from growing in your relationship with the one who created you, but will only decrease you. And you know what? Death hits you and you die in a bad state. And as Allah says, the Creator says, do not die except in a state of full submission. So when you're chit-chatting away and you're looking at something that you're not supposed to be looking at, you're doing some things you're not supposed to be doing, you know what they are. Ask yourself, is Allah pleased with me at this moment? Am I earning His pleasure? Or you know what? I'm getting closer to the fire. Oh Allah, please protect us from this. Please protect us from this and grant us your jannah. Grant us your jannah. Let's be more in a constant state of self-development according to how the Creator Allah the Almighty has told us to be, that's worshiping Him alone. Following the sunnah of the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the same way you would have been following Jesus, Moses, and all the messengers if you were living during their time. And this was the reminder to myself first and foremost and to all my brothers and sisters in humanity and my brothers and sisters in faith. I love you for the sake of Allah. Keep me and all of us at the Dean Show, in your du'as, let's go on to meet Brother Sanel. Sanel, an amazing, an amazing individual. You'll see in a moment when we come back. Peace. Salaam alaikum. Deen, Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, 
There's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah La ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice The danger, the danger. This is the danger 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 This is the danger, the danger. This is the danger. This is the danger. This is the danger. Welcome to the Dean Show. This is your host today, a new face. This is Dr. Mamdouh Mohammed welcoming you to a wonderful, unique program today. Today, I am interviewing a new person, a person that whom you will love whenever you see on this screen and you will be proud of, a person that I felt so proud of meeting him today. I came to Chicago today and I was lucky that Brother Eddie, uh, the host of this program, the original host of this program, asked me to interview this brother. I've been here in Chicago only for a few hours and I was lucky to have this opportunity to meet this brother called Sanal. Uh, let me hear, let him introduce himself to you and let's hear from how he wants to introduce himself. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Sanal Mehmedovic. Yes, I'm 13 years old. I'm from Bosnia, uh, Herzegovina. And I live in Chicago, Illinois, and that's basically my information. Okay, and you love to live in Chicago. Yes. And I think everybody lives in Chicago, loves Chicago very much. Yes. Why do you think that Chicago is better than other places? Because it's more diverse and more diverse there's a lot of Muslims. Do, like, do you like diversity? Yes. And there's a lot of Muslims here? Yes. Do you interact with them, the Muslims here? Yes, my friends are Muslim. Okay. And for example, like my friends that come from different countries too are Muslim. Oh, you have friends from different countries? That are Muslim too. So. That are Muslims too? Yeah. Okay, good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, tell me, I see that you speak English and uh, do you speak other languages? I speak sign language. Um, you speak sign language? English, Bosnian, uh, a little bit of Spanish. A little bit of Spanish? Yes. Wow, so four languages. Yeah. That's, you are much better than my case. I know only two languages and a half. Alhamdulillah. Do you thank God for that? Yes. So now you know few languages. You know sign language. How did you learn the sign language? Um, from my parents because they're both deaf and oh. I picked it all. I picked up words and letters as I grew older. Your two parents are deaf. Yes. They don't listen. Yeah. And you learned from them sign language. Yes. And now you are using this language to communicate with them. Yes. And you're making life much easier for them by communication. Yes. In fact, it was very difficult for me and for Brother Eddie to uh, communicate with your father until you came and we found that you are helping us a lot. <laughs> do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this or do you thank your parents for this? I think both of them because... Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the chance of learning okay. something that other people wouldn't have. Yeah. And I don't have it myself. I don't have it. I have a handicapped child mm -hmm. and I could not learn sign language. I could not, could not communicate with her. Oh. So I think you are blessed. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. glorified you and blessed you with this ability to help your two parents. You're doing a wonderful job, although you are young, you are handicapped, but you're yes. doing a wonderful job that I'm quite sure, inshallah, that Allah is so pleased with you. Right. Yes. Are you pleased with Allah? Yes. Okay, why are you pleased with Him? Because He um, made my life um, easier and Allah. more like... Um, Exciting and more like educational. More educational, so yeah. you can learn. Yes. Although you're handicapped, you still have some uh, blessings and bounties from Almighty Allah that you can learn and you can communicate 
And not only one language, you're talking about four languages approximately. Yes. Wonderful. Your English is amazing. Perhaps Thank it's you. better than my you English. Look yes, I'm, I'm glad. I'm really proud of you. Uh, now, let me tell me, ask you. I've seen some tournament of these wonderful things that. Uh, tell me about that. Um, well, these are the trophies. The trophies I yes. won the on a, the tournaments that I played with Buddy Baseball, which is. You, you play baseball? Yes, which is, Buddy Baseball is which, like baseball for kids who are handicapped. Okay. And so I won this. You won this. With my school. So with your school. So yes. it's, it's a teamwork. Yes. Okay. And tell me about your role in the team. Oh. Were you leading the team or were you just a member or a player? I was probably both because everybody was a leader in okay. what they f where they played. Like I was the, usually the... Um, the pitcher or the, uh, yeah. the, the pitcher. hitter, yeah. and so uh, yeah, so everybody had different parts and roles, okay. and tried their best to lead. And you were proud of yourself yes. that you did that, and your parents are proud of you. Yes. And I'm proud of you. Uh, well, I'm quite sure that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves to see you achieving these things, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that I I have perhaps taken some. Uh, of the bounties and the blessings that I have given to others to test him and alhamdulillah it's quite obvious that you are in the process of passing the test we ask Allah to give you support to continue passing the test and achieve more okay now I'd like to ask you tell me about your future I've seen uh, other things also you achieved other things would you like to tell me about this thing also as well it's uh, the same this is, is the same one but it was a little older than the other one we just showed you. Okay. It was my first year of this one. Okay. Of buddy baseball, so. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been practicing baseball? I would say about four years. Four years? Yes. Oh, so you've been practicing baseball since you were nine years or yeah. eight years? Yes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So although you are handicapped, but this did not prevent you from enjoying your life. Tell me, how do you spend most of your time? Um, well, I read you books read? Okay. or anything. So you read different types of books yeah. or specific types of books? Just anything that... Anything that you... Okay. And um, the internet. Oh, you, access, you have access to the internet yes. at home. And you use the internet. Yes. And you use your left hand. Yes. And you're comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what, what do you like on the internet? Um, well, like anybody, I go... Okay. I do the... Games or okay. watch videos. Good. My email. Your email? You yeah. correspond with other people by email? Yes. Okay, this wonderful uh, opportunity here. Let's take a break and come back. One God, worship Him alone. Do what He wants you to do. Put your desires, this thing inside you that just wants this and wants that and you just can't get enough. You know what? You never get enough until the dirt's in your mouth. Don't let it come to that. Be sincere and honest. Ask the one who created you to guide you. It's the first step. Put off. Chasing all the women and the good times and the parties and this and that. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Don't wait. You never know if death will come today for you or not. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If Allah is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lot's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lot's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Uh, this is your host again, Mamdur Muhammad. Welcome to the Dean Show. Welcome to this unique episode that's so unique in our life, in my life because I have a handicapped child and in the life of every Muslim. Let's hear from him now. We've heard from him that he is enjoying his life. He has a lot of readings. He has a lot of hobbies. And he got some uh, trophies because of his, uh, alhamdulillah, practicing uh, sports with other people that would suit him. So although he is disabled, this did not prevent him from practicing a normal life, uh, almost close to normal. But tell me about your relationship with Allah, with God. 
uh, you are in a situation not like you are not like any regular or any normal uh, human being. You are handicapped. Tell me about your experience. Does this affect your relationship with God? Do you thank Him? Do you still thank Him? Do you feel that something? What 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 is? This, how can you describe your relationship with God? Well, I think I was one of the for giving me everything and even um like for me being disabled is not really like something that I hate because I get to learn things about wow. being disabled and like and I still have a great relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you still you still love him? Yes. Okay, and you still do you pray the daily prayers? Yeah. I try oh. as hard as I can. MashaAllah. Yeah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I think I, I want every viewer to learn from this. He's disabled, as you see, he still prays. How about those people who are blessed with their full bodies? I want them to listen. <laughs> oh God, forgive me when I I'm sorry for that. I, perhaps you've seen that. I'm so touched by the words that come from his heart. And I envy him of doing this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him support. We see in the world millions of people, if not billions of people, who enjoy their full body. However, they still they are not thankful to their creator. They are not thankful to the God who created them with full and strong body. Uh, let's enjoy talking to this wonderful brother. Now, you have uh, some few minutes now to talk to the whole world. What would you like? What is the message that you think? Because you have a unique experience and you say that you enjoy your life even if you are disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the message that you want to give to the viewers? There are millions of people are watching you now. So what would you like to tell them? I would like to tell them to... Um Enjoy their life. Be thankful to Allah for whatever you have. Be thankful of Allah of whatever you have. And whatever you don't. Cause Even whatever you don't. Yeah, cause Why is that? Because like, um, maybe he doesn't give you bad things. So be thankful he doesn't. Yeah. So Allah does not give you any bad things. Yeah. Yes. But he may be testing you. So yeah. this is part of the test that you are. Every human being is going through a test. Mm -hmm. But the test is different. One of them may be handicapped, the other one may be sick, the other one may be deprived of children, the other one would be his intellect would be less than the intellect of others. He's not smart as you. You are smarter than yeah. many people that I interviewed in my lifetime. So Allah is testing everybody with a different test. Mm -hmm. And now, what a Muslim should do when he or she is confronting a test? Should we accept the test? Or should we reject it and become ungrateful to Almighty Allah? We should accept it and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for testing us and try your hardest to do like whatever you can to um, be thankful and happy and try to pass the test. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. And now we are talking about tests and passing the test. Do you believe that if you pass the test successfully, in this life, there is another later life? Yes. Do you believe in that? Yes. And do you believe that in that life you will be given all the powers that any other human being yeah. will have? And you are hoping for that? Yes. You see, and is this a beauty of this religion that you feel hopeful? Yeah, because you know that you may have a hard life now, but yes. a lot will be better, you know, later half the afterlife if you go to paradise. Okay. And no. Now I am your interviewer. I'm older than you, uh, perhaps three or four times. If you want to give me an advice for me, what would you tell me? To never like give up and always be happy. Never give up. Yeah, and, and always be happy. Yes. 
thank you for this advice and uh, we'll we'll try to wrap up very quickly and we'll take a break and then we'll come back after taking this break no problem you can take my daughter to dinner you and my daughter and me let me tell you something it's natural that's the idea God created it and he created us to have a good time mm -hmm. we should have a good time only with our wives though Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world and most of the converts are women not men they see that the rules of Islam instead of constraining them the rules set them free Welcome back to the Dean Show. This is your host, Dr. Mamdur Muhammad. Muhammad interviewing our Sanal Mahmoudi. Sanal, yes. Again, I think that you need to remember Sanal all the time because he's an example, a wonderful example that we rarely see such an example in our life nowadays, particularly for those who are disabled. And I mentioned in the beginning that I have one son who is disabled and I wish that he would see what's going on, although he cannot communicate, but I'm quite sure that he will benefit from this. All the disabled people would see how cheerful he is and how hopeful he is and he still has some plans for the future and I wish everybody would learn from him. Not only the disabled, but the abled one and I'm going to come back to them. But let me ask him first, tell me about your future, your dreams. What do you want to achieve? What do you want to happen? What if you ask God now? First, let's ask you. If you ask God now, what do you ask God to give you? Inshallah, like better education, okay. knowledge of Islam, and okay. um, inshallah, I'd like to become um, anything in the medical field. Go ahead, the medical field to give you support. This, this is not difficult for Allah. This is so easy for Allah. If Allah wills, He will give you health and He will give you your body back. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you this. And, and, and I'm, I trust Allah. And perhaps you have heard the story of the Prophet Ayyub. He was so sick to the degree that his family members used to carry him. Yes, he could not move at all. He, to the degree that he lost his skin. And he was in a terrible situation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved him. Then after some time when he passed the test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him his body back and all his powers came back to him. So it's not difficult. It's, it's, we just continue asking Almighty mm -hmm. Allah that he will give you this inshallah. But tell me about your future. Uh, what do you want to do after 20 years, after 10 years? What do you want to do? It get, um, inshallah, become something in the medical field. and in the medical field. You want to, mer to work in the medical field. And give information about Islam to people who would, you know, need to know like that. And to work in the field of da'wah. Yes. To teach people about this religion. Yes. What is good about this religion? You're 13 years old. You're not adult yet. You're mm -hmm. in, the, in the process of being adult yet. Yeah. Tell me, what, what, what attracts you to this religion? That you know that there is um, an afterlife that would could be greater than yes, what you have. Yes, there is another life and the after death. Love of all the Muslim people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you love Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala, masha'Allah, masha'Allah. And this is where you get the comfort to your heart. Yes. You feel comfortable by belonging to this religion. Mm -hmm. Right, masha'Allah. I'm, I'm proud of you to hear that. And again and again. Tell me something that, uh, do you, when you pray, ca how can you pray? I sit in my chair. You sit in your chair? And do it like any other. And, okay, you put your hand on your chest yes, as much as possible. And yeah. when we bend over it. And you bend over to yes. bow? Yes. So you do exactly the prayer as, as if but, we are traveling. But in sitting. Position. But in sitting, because when we are traveling in an airplane, for example, mm -hmm. we sit on chairs and we do exactly as you said. Yes. We put our hands like this and we start reciting, then we bow a little bit, then we bow more, and we finish it. Yes. So again and again and again. I remind everybody who is showing us, Muslims and non-Muslims, he is an example of a person who is disabled even though he does not miss his prayer. He does the prayer as the Prophet Sallallahu asked us to do. If you cannot do it while you are standing, you can do it while you are sitting. There is no excuse for the people to not to do the prayer. I want everybody to learn from this experience. And shame on us if we have all the organs in our bodies and all our limbs are in our bodies and we don't perform our prayers. 
you see this is an example a true example it's the first time for me to meet him and okay now I'd like you to uh, to hear from you a word uh, for your parents your wonderful parents your father who's sitting here I'm so sorry because I cannot communicate with him I don't know sign language I wish I would have learned this what would you like to tell your father that I love him and I'm thankful for him to you know help me and teach me everything that you need to know you love your father you thank him for yes. helping you and for teaching you and you're enjoying your life with him yes. and you told me that you have some fun and some good time with your sisters yes. do you have the same time with your father and mother? yes we okay. play around and, and you know, laugh with each other okay and the school that you go and you spend how many times do you go to school? Do you go every day? Yes, I go every day. And tell me about, do you enjoy the environment there? Yes, I enjoy because everybody is from a different culture and okay. you get to learn and the people are really nice there. Good, wonderful. Did you have a chance to, to talk to some people about Islam in your presentations or in your discussions at school? Well, yeah, like my um, aide who helps me. Yes. You know, he didn't know that I was Muslim, so I told him, and he learned a little. He learned a lot about yes. Islam. Your aide, the one who gives you support, yes. yes, at school. Yes. You taught him about Islam. Yes. Yes, and he's happy about Islam. Yeah. And he believes that, that the media talks negatively about the Islam. The media is yeah. not fair to Islam. And you're giving him a clear picture of Islam, which mm -hmm. the essence of it is peace. Yes. Which, which we hope that everybody would enjoy peace in the whole world. Yes. That's a wonderful thing. Okay, now you are on the Dean Show, and have you ever seen some programs on the Dean Show? Yes, I've seen some um, with a little girl. Yes. And the um, rapper Loon. Okay. And you. And have you seen them? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, why do you watch the Dean Show? Because it's. Um, it's nice to know that like there's um other Muslims who show how they live and you yes. know. And it gives a real message of Islam yes. to people, to the Muslims and non Muslims. Yes. And I think that it's a good way of saying that this is this is our Islam, this is the mainstream and we're trying to present as much as possible mm -hmm. the image of our beloved Prophet. Yes. What's his name? Muhammad Sallallahu Muhammad Alaihi Wasallam. Again, this is a great opportunity. I thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for giving me this opportunity. But before I leave you, I wish I don't want to leave you. I want to stay with you longer time. But I ask Almighty Allah to give you quick recovery and to give you your health back inshallah very soon and we'll see you playing with us we'll come and play with you yeah. inshallah and if it doesn't happen i hope it happens very soon inshallah but i'm quite sure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a much better life in later life mm -hmm. you're sure of that yes i'm glad to meet you and i'm going to kiss your hand if you allow me May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and bless your family. And I'm thankful to the Dean Show who gave me this opportunity to interview Sanal. Again, I want you to remember this wonderful name and I hope I don't forget it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is your host, Dr. Mamdouh Nuruddin Muhammad. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, repent to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, surrender to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Obey your Lord, submit to Him, avoid the danger of the major sins. Stay away, stay away, major sins. Ignore the whispers, O Lord. mercy. Have mercy on our souls. Stay away. Ignore the whispers. O Lord, O Lord, have mercy on our souls. Avoid the footsteps of Shaitan, who's plotting, scheming 24 7. Trickery, deception, falsehood, lies. Anything to keep you in the firing line He'll tell you anything that you want to hear He'll be your friend when no one else is there No matter what he says, he's a stone-cold liar He 
only wants to keep you in the fire and light. Stay away, ignore the whispers. Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Stay away, ignore the whispers.